Father in heaven, we kneel before thee at this time on America's Sabbath day. And Lord, we thank you that you've got children keeping the Sabbath around this world and to honour thee and all they do and word, thought and deed. And I pray, Lord, I first went to Los Angeles 32 years ago and we're 32 years closer to the coming of the Lord. Things are wrapping up in this world and I pray that we might be an encouragement to each other, that we might lift up the weak, point them to the cross. And may we realise we're pilgrims on this earth and Lord, we're soon to go to the promised land. Uh, the pioneers talked about it all through the ages. Martin Luther talked about it, Huss and Jerome, and now we're on the brink of the Jordan River. I pray that we might keep our eyes fixed on thee, Lord, that you'd put a hot coal upon our lips, forgive us for our sins, keep us under thy wing, and that we might uh, give the trumpet a certain sound. In Jesus' name, praise be to God, amen. 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 Okay, the mark of the beast is coming. Will you will you escape that's the question i've met many many people who are misled on the mark of the beast and so people are fearful of what is happening in the world today there are wars rumors of wars pestilences and a great there's a great centralizing of financial uh economic and religious power in the world today and i just say lord that Soon no man will buy or sell if they refuse the mark of the beast. Soon the supermarkets will be closed to all who refuse the mark. We as a people have forgotten how to grow our own food and we're totally reliant on the devil's system. Most Adventists will sell their birthright for a pottage, as Esau did. Now is the time to not only get on our knees, but I spoke to someone recently, they said they just had a workout in the gym. He was an Adventist, a professional man. I said, you got the wrong direction. You should be working out on a shovel, not at the gym building pretty muscles. Work out on a shovel and put some food in for ourselves. So we must prepare for what is coming upon this world, both, both spiritually and, and uh, physically or economically. And so what is the mark of the beast? Many will sadly be deceived out of eternal life. In the 1970s, a friend of mine found out what the mark of the beast was from a guru in the Himalayas. The guru told my friend the beast was a giant computer in Brussels numbered 666 and the image to the beast was a backup computer in Woomera, Australia. If the main that's if one the main one broke down, all would be held down and branded on the right hand, and if they couldn't grab your hand, they would brand your forehead. No man would be able to buy and sell without the mark. And so there's something wrong with my presentation there with all the gaps but we're going to push on anyway can we all agree that to escape the mark of the beast we must know what the mark is that's essential can we all agree on that yes. texas will not take the mark of the beast in texas they believed the vaccines were the mark of the beast well i don't agree with them i disagree with vaccination it's against every principle of heaven and our body is the temple of god and we we should be careful what we put in it but we know that they plan to vaccinate the world again. They're working on something now. So we know the devil has a short time and he wants to take every one of us with him. And we have dear Jesus on our side. But, and so will it be an uh, implant chip? Uh, these are the one things that are sorting, are going around the circles of those who think. Are chip implants the mark of the beast? Let's find out. The Bible says the devil will deceive the whole world so we can expect deception. Is that correct? In Revelation 12, 9. The majority were wrong at the flood and so will the majority be wrong in the last days, yet they will think they're right. But as the days of Noah were, so also shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's in Matthew 24, 37. And so Hal Lindsay, one of the great Christian Preachers from the evangelicals believe that the New World Order, uh, a physical computerized mark, would be the mark of the beast. So did Pat Robertson from Club 700. So did David Jeremiah. All these men believe Kenneth Copeland. He claims to be a Christian. They all believe the mark of the beast is a computerized system. Billy Graham believed the mark of the beast is a New World Order money system. Today, Preachers have many ideas of what the mark of the beast is, but God's Bible only has one 
mark of the beast. Amazingly, most Christian evangelists and Christian people today also believe the mark of the beast is the same as what the guru in the Himalayas taught, my friend, nearly 45 years ago. God's Bible is the only book in all the world that tells the future accurately. God has recorded much of Bible prophecy and symbols to preserve it from destruction by his enemies who are mentioned in it. And they purport to be the guardians of God's word, and yet they burnt the word and they burnt those that wanted to read it for themselves. So the Bible explains what these symbols are. And so these symbols can be easily identified for God is not the author of confusion, 1 Corinthians 14, 33. The righteous shall understand these symbols, but the disobedient will not understand. In times past, God has winked at our ignorance. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Acts 17, 30. God gives a solemn warning to all of humanity who take the mark of the beast in the coming religio-political union. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in their forehead or in his right hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Revelation 14, 9 and 10. Would God give this solemn warning to deceived humanity without first explaining to them what the mark of the beast is? No, never, because the Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, would, not willing that any should perish, that it all should come to repentance. The, the Bible says the mark of the beast is over true worship, not a computer. Mm. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image, so we see that it's over worship of God, the true worship of God or the wrong worship of God. Nearly all the Sunday-keeping churches confidently believe that the New World Order's computerized money system is the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is, however, over the correct worship of God or the incorrect worship of God. A computer in itself is neither good nor bad. It can be used for both good or bad, like a gun, which can be used to shoot a little girl, or it can be used to shoot a lion, which is about to attack the girl. A computer can and will be used for, to enforce this false religion, but it is not the false worship system itself. The only place the mark of the beast is mentioned is in the Bible. So we will find what this fatal mark is only in the Bible and not from a guru in the Himalayas. Amen. The following eight Bible verses are the only places the mark of the beast is mentioned. We will examine them for they will help us find out what the Bible says the mark of the beast is. Those who refuse to worship the image of the beast shall be killed. And he hath power to give life under the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and, and um, as many as would not worship the image of the beast shall be killed. So no man will buy and sell without the mark and that no man might buy or sell save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Revelation 13, 17. Number three, and he shall cause all both small and great, rich and poor, to poor at, to receive and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Revelation 13, 16. And the third angels followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in their, fore in their forehead or in their hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Revelation 14, 9 to 10. Revelation 14, 11. And they had no rest day or night who worshiped the beast in his image and who received the mark of, of his name. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. And I saw that they were on the sea of glass having the harps of God. And so we've got to understand what these symbols mean. And the first went and poured out his veil upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which had worshipped his image. And Revelation 19, 20, and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that had worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire. Revelation, Amen. and the last one, Revelation 24, 
and I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received his mark upon the forehead or, or in the hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years Amen. so in these eight verses which mention the mark of the beast we also find the following symbols which when understood will help us identify the mark of the beast we must also identify the following symbols the image of the beast the name of the beast the number of his name let's go we must identify the first beast who received the wound the wound was healed then all the world wondered after the beast and the second beast who rose as a lamb then spoke as a dragon to find out what the mark of the beast is we must first find out who who this beast is a beast is a kingdom in daniel 7 23 so that explains what a beast is it's not a computer it's a kingdom the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces the beast is a religious power and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him revelation 13 8. so the beast is a worldwide power and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not and, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him so it's a worldwide power it's a religious power and the beast has a man at its head and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies revelation 13 16. the beast who had has a man at its head blasphemed god and he opened his mouth and blasphemy in blasphemy against the god to blaspheme his name against god to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle revelation 13 17. so we're building this space to understand what the mark of the beast is most of christendom today believes the beast is a computer the bible says the beast is a kingdom this beast would think to change god's rest day that's river daniel 7:25 and he shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change times and laws and so if we are to understand what the mark of the beast really is we must understand the bible symbolism connected with these great end time prophecies let's look at the symbolism symbolic statue which prophesied four great world empires when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whosoever readeth let him understand Matthew 24 15 so Jesus himself told us to understand the book of Daniel here we see we're, we're going to go through this very quickly but this symbolism of a statue we know the head of gold is Babylon we know that Persia was the arms and the and the uh, chest the Greece was the brass and we know Rome in both stages were the legs of iron and then we had the feet of Mary clay which were the ten kingdoms of Europe and then we saw in that time of Europe that Lord would come back and set up his kingdom let us continue our search with with the now four beasts of Daniel chapter 7 there the now Christ mentions the same kingdoms but this time they mentioned as beasts and the four great beasts came up from the sea that's a populated area the first was like a lion a second like a bear another like a leopard a fourth beast dreadful and terrible and it had ten horns well we know the lion with two wings was babylon we know the bear raised up on one side with three ribs in his mouth was meadow persia this is standard material for seventh day advents we know these things but it's good to go over them again because we're getting ready for the greatest battle we ever had in our life the the third beast was greece with four heads and four wings showing a, a swift conquest and it ruled from 331 to 163 bc does anybody know what the four beasts were the heads the four heads were the kingdoms lysimachus uh, cassandra Plutonomy and the other one and pagan rome ruled from 168 bc 163 bc 
to 476 AD. And so that was a nondescript beast, terrible beast with ten horns. We've got to now find out what... So a beast in Bible prophecy is a symbol for a kingdom, nation, or power. And then th these great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall rise out of the earth. Daniel 7:17 7, and Daniel 7:23 reiterates that. So we're clear that the computer is not the beast. Amen. The beast is a nation. And so we see thus the fourth king reiterates that a beast is a kingdom. So what are waters in Bible prophecy? Waters are peoples, multitudes, and tongues, Revelation 17, 15. So these all powers rose up in a populated area. Babylon, there's the area of dominion. That's amazing, but there it is. And then there's the winged lion on their old wall at Babylon, re reformed from the rubble. So God knew what he was doing when he identified this beast as Babylon. And we, from archaeology, we can identify that beast as Babylon. Then we see the hanging gardens of Babylon. Then Medo-Persia raised up on one side because the Persians were greater than Media. And the three ribs of the three country or nations, they conquered. And then Medo-Persia ruled 539, 331 BC. There's their extensive kingdom. It went from Greece all the way through to the Indus River in India. Medo-Persia, Greece with the four wings, a leopard. There's their empire. It stretched, stretched from Afghanistan all the way through to Greece and down into Egypt. And the Greek soldiers, you can see they had leopard skins on their, uh, on their horses. And leopard skins, they wore, wore leopard skins for protection. So God knew what he was doing when he was showing the leopard skins represented Greece and the lion represented Babylon. Pagan Rome the terrible nondescript beast. There's the remains of the Colosseum where they fed the Christians to the lions. There's their conquest from nearly into Scotland, Spain, North Africa. Quite a huge area was the Roman Empire. And the ten horns. Papacy rises out of the pagan Rome. And the ten horns out of this kingdom, that's pagan Rome was a kingdom, are ten kings, European nations, that shall arise, and another, papal Rome, shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings, that's the Ostrogoths, the Hurali, and the Vandals, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and the dividing of time. How do we interpret these symbols? We know that the, four, the ten horns were the ten nations of Israel, of Europe. And uh, people might have another opinion, but ours, our interpretation, Adventist interpretation, fits as a glove. Amen. At, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, Daniel 7, 24. And so then the little horn, the papacy, destroys three of the ten horns, exactly as was said by Daniel a thousand years beforehand. The Hurali, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths were destroyed by the Iron Fist of Rome. And then this, the, this beast received its power and seat from pagan Rome. And the beast which I saw and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. What does it mean that he, pagan Rome gave papal Rome its seat? Pape, the Church of Christ started in Jerusalem, but here we see this false religious worship has the seat of Rome, so it's sitting right in Rome. And the dragon, which represents pagan Rome and also the devil, gave him a seat of authority. So we see all these things that coming to true because God is not the author of confusion. So we can see them all fitting in perfectly. And there, out of the ruins of political Rome, arose a great moral empire that, uh, that in the form of the Roman Catholic Church. That's a Justinian decree fortifi fortifies papal to secular power over Western Europe in what? 538 AD. We know that's the case. And we know from a time, times, and the timing, uh, and the halving of time, 
We know the Bible interpretation of that is 1260 days and a year for a day. So if our understanding of this prophecy is correct, then we must see something happening to this power if our interpretation is correct in the year 1798, because we take, took the Justinian decree of 538, then we add 1260 onto it, we come to 1798. We're going to find out whether our understanding is true or not. But did they speak great words against the Most High? Yes, they did. They called themselves Most Holy Father. We know these things. We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. What blasphemy? Because God said in Matthew 23, 9, call, call no man father. And, no. Our fa and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Okay. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou, thou only are holy, wrote Revelation 15, 4. And in verse 8 of Matthew 23, no, 23, it says, All ye are brethren, we're all one in Christ. And so did they wear out the saints of the Most High? Yeah. Sadly, they did. For professing faith, contrary to the teachings of the Church of Rome, history records that martyrdom, the martyrdom of more than 100 million people, that did you know that Rome said, no, no, it was only 50 million. Well, God knows every one of those little children of him. He died for them, and he's going to raise them up again on that judgment day. Woe unto Rome on that day, and those that kill in the name of gentle Jesus. Did they think to change times and laws? Yes, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Did it rule for 1260 years? Well, let's find out. If our understanding of these prophecies is correct, then we must see something happened in 1798 to the papacy. What happened? Exactly in 1798. The Pope was taken prisoner. Pope Pius VI was taken prisoner by Bertia, the French Republican uh, general from, uh, from uh, the beast from the bottomless pit of Revelation 11.7. So we're identifying these, a beast is not a computer, we've identified the symbol of a beast as a nature. Let us identify the two beasts of Revelation 13. Let us, the first beast of Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And the beast, the papacy, the, I'm putting that in there, which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion. That means it inherited some of the evils of all those previous kingdoms, and the, they masqueraded Jesus Christ. And this is the clue. It was wounded to death. This is the same beast, beast that was wounded in 1798, and his deadly wound was healed, 1929. And all the world wondered, now after the beast, Revelation 13, 1 to 3. It's amazing that we see all these things exactly coming through because God's prophecy is a sure word of prophecy. The beast was wounded. The, the wound was healed in 1929 when they got their secular power back from Mussolini on the left and Cardinal Gasparri there under the Lateran Treaty. And there, what did the people of America see in the newspaper? Heal wound of many years. So people were on to what was going on. Then what was the third part of this a prophecy? All the world would wonder after the beast. And that's exactly what we see happening today. All over the world, Mexico, Brazil, Zaire, Greece, France, Chicago, Ireland, Poland, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic. All the world is wondering after the beast. Here they are in Japan with all these little deceived girls dancing around the Antichrist. And all the world wondered. Nigeria, there he is waving out. People are calling him Holy Father. He's taking worship with his only Jew to our Father in heaven through Jesus Christ. There he is in the Philippines. We see the sure word of prophecy coming true. There he is in, again in the Philippines. Then in Papua New Guinea, the Pope's coming there. Pope Francis, the Jesuit, is coming there in uh, 
14 days time we just sent seven pallet loads of material to greet him it says in evangelism uh, 705 God expects his children that's us to expose the wickedness of the man of sin who has changed God's holy Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday God's got feelings he said I make the rules and we submit to that because there's nowhere else to go we're but dust he is the king of the universe he makes the rules he's got feelings he had feelings when the Jews the unbelieving Jews killed Jesus Christ he wants us to expose the wickedness of man of sin so please pray that the people of New Guinea will be warned against the Antichrist that is coming that God will raise up workers to reap the vineyard to distribute the seven pallet loads of material that are just landed there we pray that God will protect it because the devil would burn every book that exposes tyranny. There is in Thailand, Peru, Cameroon, India, Great Britain, Australia. I was there just to the left on that photo when the, and the Jesuit told me I'd be dead in nine days for giving out this literature. But anyway, Sri Lanka. Roman Catholics believe there is salvation only in the Roman Catholic Church. Roman Catholics believe the Pope is the head of the worldwide fraternity. Bible prophesizes the people would worship the papacy. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. That's the same power of Daniel 7.25. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months, multiplied by 30 days for a prophetic month. And we have 1260 days. That's amazing. The, pap the papacy would speak blasphemies against God. Hence the Pope is crowned with a triple crown as king of heaven, and of earth and of the lower regions. That's blasphemy. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. Amen. So John 18:36. The papacy ruled for, uh, for 42 months, 1260 is the same beast. Bible prophesied all the world would worship the papacy, but not the saints. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in earth. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given unto him to kindred and tongues and nations. And all that dwelt upon the earth shall, on the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation 13, 6-8. Let us find out who the second beast of, of Revelation 13 is. We believe it's the United States of America. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. That's a non-populated area. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. And causes the earth and all them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So the second beast here is obviously the wounded beast, the papacy. But I, I'll, but he and he exercised all the power of the first beast. What was the power of the first beast? The union of church and state that gave it its tyrannical power. So the United States, to have the same power, has to unite church and state. So they started like a lamb when they they had had two horns and church and state separate. So. It, it's exactly fitting in to uh, what is happening in the world today, the sure word of prophecy. So he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. So the second beast had to be rise up about the time of the demise or wound of the first beast. And that's exactly what happened in America. Amen. So Waters in Revelation 17, 15 says lots of people, this beast came up out of the earth. So we conclude that it came up in a sparsely populated area. Did it speak as a lamb? It rose as a lamb. The persecuted Protestants leave Catholic Europe from a better life and vacant earth of the new world. They left the tyranny of the union of church and state for a man 
could not exercise its conscience with God. And there they are, these humble people. And the earth opened, uh, helped the woman, and the woman is the church. And the earth opened her mouth and was a flood, the dragon cast out of his mouth. Revelation 12, 16. The Pilgrim Fathers flee persecution from church state union and bring the Bible to America. Why did it speak as a lamb? It tolerated religion. Every man, this is George Washington, the first president, every man conducting himself as a good citizen and being accountable to God alone for his religious opinions ought to be protected and worshiping the deity according to the dictates of his own conscience. There is one of the founders there, Benjamin Franklin, when the religion is good, I conceive it will support itself. And when it cannot support itself, and God does not take care of it to support it, so that its professors are obliged to call for the help of the civil power, it is a sign I, I apprehend of it being a bad one. And so this is the, America is fulfilling exactly what was written out by John 1900 years plus on Patmos. And it's coming true. So the United States rose as a lamb because it kept the two powers of church and state separate. Now, the Baptists, because it was a lamb, the Baptists have the right to worship God according to the dictates of their conscience. The Episcopalian Church, which was the American version of the Church of England, can worship God according to the dictates of their conscience. Roman Catholics can worship God according to the dictates. So can the Presbyterians. So can the Mormons. So can the Jehovah Witnesses. So can the Muslims exercise this power in America. So can the Seventh-day Adventists. I was told there that they were a cult, and I believed it 50 years ago, but never mind. Where God's got ways of breaking down the hardest heart. And so the Jewish religion prospers in America, the land of the three. Satanist Anton LaVey was mentioned by Eugene earlier. They are tolerated in America. People don't have to agree with them, but as long as a man is a law-abiding citizen, his religion is his own business. Golfers are allowed to practice their religion in America. So a footballer is allowed to practice their religion. So are baseballers. So are basketballers. And so all law-abiding Americans can go to church on any day they want to and then answer to God only for their faith. The United States will speak as a dragon when they unite church and state and enforce popery Sunday laws. And he, the US, had power to give life unto the image of the beast, the union of church and state in America, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast, the union of church and state, should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark for Sunday laws. In their, in, their forehead, in their hand or in their foreheads. Revelation. Nearly all the people re will receive the mark of the beast in the right hand or in their forehead. The great majority will receive the mark of the beast in the forehead or in the right hand. The modern Bibles have been twisted to read on the right hand or on the forehead to fit their idea that the mark of the beast is a literal computer mark. But the in means that the people of the world will either receive the mark in the forehead by genuinely believing and accepting this Sunday law, and all the others will accept this this, this false system uh, that comes along. They will accept it on their hand, meaning they'll work for whatever system comes along for their sustenance and daily bread. The United U.S. Sunday churches are fighting back by using politics against the obvious evils of abortion, immigration, homosexuality, evolution, etc., which they see as part of the global attack from the liberal antichrist New World Order. So the devil's got a Punch and Judy show going here. U.S. Sunday Christians are speaking out against those who are using racism for furthering their New World Order. There we go. Black Lives Matter. But what's happening? The Christians are reacting, saying all lives matter. Then refugees and immigration, 20 million, I don't know how many, I've heard 7, 10, 12, but they're coming in. That This new world order wants to bastardize all the races into one brown race and rule it, 
from Jerusalem, from their new built temple, which is not going to be built. But immigration, Americans are sick of it, right? People are allowed, welcome into America through the channel, the correct immigration channel, but they're not allowed to climb the fences. Homosexuality and same-sex marriage. U.S. Christians are speaking out against this. And John Hagee, John Hage, you must have heard of him, right? A Sunday-keeping church. He's speaking out against homosexuality. U.S. pastors are speaking out against homosexuality. Billy Graham says homosexuals should be castrated. Here they are. They're goading. The devil is goading through liberalism. Our liberties through the separation of church and state of Revelation 22, Matthew 22, 21, to give unto Caesar the things that Caesar's, and unto God the, the things that are God, are being turned into licentiousness. And these poor souls are, are goading the Sunday keeping churches to react. They don't know it, but that's the devil's job. Here they are. And the Sunday keeping churches are reacting. Why did God destroy Sodom? Good question. Same sex marriage dooms nation. So the devil is raising up the bad guys, the New World Order, the coming Antichrist on one side. Now the Sunday keeping churches are, the, uh, are reacting back, and the Sunday keeping churches are out there. The, the liberals with their homosexualities and gays are fighting back. They're against abortion. There's some aborted babies that Jesus Christ died for. They're lying dead because, and there's over a million babies are aborted each year in America. It's murder. The Sunday keeping churches are recognizing these obvious evils and they're speaking out against it with great power, their power, the devil's power. There, you cannot be a Catholic and pro-abortion, stop abortion. The Greek Orthodox are standing up against it. America, pray and fast for God to end abortion. U.S. Sunday Christians are asking the state to stop abortion, and the state should because they've got to protect the unborn, whether they're Mormons or whatever they are. The future is anti-abortion. So the Sunday keeping churches are being riled up by these obvious evils. There it is. These Christians are praising the gunmen that are shot at this stage, there may be more now, 11 abortion doctors. They've gone to the clinic to carry out abortions and bang, some irate Christian has put a bullet in their head. So here the, the liberals on the left are fighting back against the Christians. And so parents attending school board meetings and opposing transgender sex education, evolution and critical race theory from the New World Order agenda are arrested. Gender neutral restrooms are causing outrage across America. Parents across the U.S. protest left education and are labelled as domestic terrorists. If you, have an, if you have an opinion that differs from the government's New World Order agenda, then you are labelled as a domestic terrorist. This atheistic, liberalised uh, New World Order is against Christ, and they are wanting to destroy everything good about our Christians. And the Sunday-keeping churches are standing in the gap. Here, this man was arrested by the FBI. Why? Because his daughter was raped by some perverted man who, or school boy who said, I think I'm a girl. So he went into the girl's toilet and raped this girl, and this irate father, as any father would do, started barking to the, to the liberalised church board, and what does the good old FBI do? They take him in. U.S. citizens are resisting their government trying to disarm the public. Gun control is tyranny. I was in the South there giving talks and I went into a gun shop and there's a big woolly guy there with whiskers and suspenders and cowboy boots on and I said to him, do you believe in gun control? He said, I sure do. Hold the gun with both hands. See, America <laughs> give up its guns in a hurry. And I'm saying, I I I've got an angel looking after me. And one angel killed 185,000 of Sennacherib group. Amen. So we got good angels on our side. We don't have to arm. And I said to a friend of mine in Montana, if you take up arms, you're giving the police and the FBI and all the other uh, swamp officials the right to put a bullet through your stupid head. So it's enticing. 
The, the, the left fights back saying no gun, no gun. But sure, the New World Order wants to disarm us and arm the police. January 6th, Capitol Hill, Americans have had enough. But what's happened? That's been turned around to bring in a police state. The left is trying to ban God from public places. The Sunday Christians of America are recognizing the obvious evils in their liberalized secular society where they see their liberties being turned into licentiousness. They mistakenly think that because they recognize these obvious evils, that th that makes them right. Their mistake is that they plan to steady the ship by getting into politics instead of prayer. That's others tried the same act. They have forgotten that their master said, my kingdom is not of this world. Their duty is to preach the gospel to all. Their master also separated church from state in Matthew 22, 21. The US Sunday Christians are trying to make Jesus a king, just as the Jews tried to make Christ a king. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would try and take him by force to make him a king, he departed out to a mountain himself, John 6, 15. Sunday Christians can enter politics to enhance law and order, but never to enforce their idea of religion, uh, religion on others. They can, that Caesar is there to separate the, the religions from killing each other. Here we see this artist put the church and state together by putting a steeple on Capitol Hill. They could see it back then, that 20 years ago. The Illuminati is trying to weaken the US and force her into its secular, licentious, humanistic, New World Order Global Village, which will be controlled by the UN for the international bankers. The US Sunday Christians are fighting back against the liberalized liberalism of the New World Order who they see will produce their coming antichrist. This is Jesuit futurism being enacted. The Sunday keeping evangelical right lay hands on Donald Trump. They're saying Jesus should be president of the United States. Mormons are getting into politics as they see the obvious evils of the, the time is now we need to put god back in america well the sunday keeping churches don't realize that they have the right under the constitution to go to um, go to church on sunday if they wish american sunday christians are looking for someone to save america american sunday christians are rejecting abortion and gay marriage politics isn't a dirty word the churches are saying they're trying to steady the ark as other did through the churches through, through the state. US Sunday churches are trying to, turning back to God and government. Uh, they, they think separation of church and state is a bad metaphor. America is turning back to God. US will speak as a dragon. That's Mike Johnson, the new speaker of the house. He's a Christian, Sunday keeping Christian, and there they are all praying to God against these obvious evils. And, and we know the Bible, the sure word of prophecy said, after the next election or whenever, there's going to be Sunday laws in America as Americans have had enough. New US Speaker Mike Johnson is a Sunday Christian, is against abortion and LGBTQ. Right? So all who refuse to receive the mark of the beast will not be allowed in the supermarket soon. Revelation. Note. The Bible says the mark of the beast is received in the right hand or in the forehead. We're doubling up there. The sun is setting on America's liberties. The U.S. will form an image to the first beast. The power of the first beast was a dictatorship of church and state. The United States will exercise all the power of the first beast before it. It can only do that through the union of church and state. It rose as a lamb, speaks as a dragon, when it exercises all the power of the first beast before it by uniting church and state against the obvious evils that are coming upon the world. US churches are calling for law and order and a national Sunday law. Pope John Paul II calls for Sunday laws. There's the upside down cross. Can you see that? Satanic. There's Pope Benedict the Sixteenth calls for Sunday laws. Sunday must be a day of rest for everybody. Pope Francis called for Sunday laws. Inter integral to the plan is a mandatory weekly day of rest. So the sure word of Bible, is, the God's word is coming true. I'll throw, uh, throw something in the pool here that do you know what the last three popes have got in common? 
they were all Jews. So that's another story. We've got another slide presentation on that. What is wrong with the US National Sunday Law? Well, there's God, Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto any graven images. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in name. And the fourth commandment, gentlemen, hold a meeting and decide amongst yourself what day you're going to keep. But wait a minute. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And on the other day, side, the sixth, honor father and mother, shalt not kill, commit adultery, steal, bear false witness, or covet. That's God's Ten Commandments. And he said the Ten Commandments are perfect, unchangeable, and everlasting. Amen. The Bible prophesied a power would arise out of an after pagan Rome, and he would think to change God's unchangeable law. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change God's times and laws. He thought, oh, but you can't change God's laws. Amen. The Bible states God is the only lawgiver, and his law is unchangeable. There is one lawgiver who is able to save, and who, who art thou that judges? James 4.12. The Bible warned that the Catholic Church would change the Sabbath from Saturday to sun, Sunday, and she admits she has changed, that the change is a mark of her authority. There's God's Ten Commandments on the left. There's Rome's Ten Commandments on the right. When I became a Christian in 1979, the man told me I, the commandments had been changed. I said, show me. And he showed me the left ones, and he showed me the right ones. I started keeping the Sabbath immediately. Out of thy own mouth thou shalt be judged. How much shall she glorify herself and live deliciously? So, but torment and sorrow give her. She, she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. And so that's Revelation 18.7. So out of your own mouth they shall be judged. <coughs> of course the Catholic Church claimed that the change from Saturday to Sunday was her act. And the act is a mark of her ecclesiastic power, ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. And so they make the claim, out of their own mouth they shall be judged. The Catholic Church for over 1,000 years before the existence of a Protestant, by virtue of a divine mission, change the day from Saturday to Sunday. We observe Sunday in, instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church and the Council of Laodicea transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. And even Pope Pius X in 1910 referred to that. You may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day we never sanctified. Cardinal Gibbons, he was a famous American cardinal in the 1880s. If the Bible is the only guide for the Christian, then the seventh day Adventist is right in observing the Saturday with the Jew. But Catholics learn what to believe and do from the Catholic Church. Is it not strange that those who make the Bible their only teacher should inconsistently follow in this matter the traditions of the Catholic Church? The Bible reveals a number of the beast is a number of a man, not a computer, and that number is 666. Here is wisdom. Let his, him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, not a computer, and his number is 600, three score, and six, not and then his name, Vicarius Filii Dio, in Roman numerals, adds up to 666. It doesn't add up to 665 or 668 or 522. It adds up to 666, exactly as the Bible said. So we interpret these in our understanding to be correct. The Pope is the Antichrist, Vicarius Filii Dei, Vicar of God, <coughs> In the Greek, it's also the Latin. We have shown from the Bible that the first beast in Revelation 13 that was wounded and healed and then all the world wondered after is the papacy. The second beast of Revelation 13 that rose up as a lamb then spoke as a dragon is the United States. The image of, to the beast is the United, uh, uniting of church and state first in America. The mark of the beast is enforced Sunday law, but by this union of church and state starting first in America. 
The number of his name is 666. That is the Pope's title by Caris Filii Dei. This is the sure word of God's prophecies. The Bible warns that there will be punishment from God for all who receive the mark. And the smoke of their torment is ended up for heaven from for heaven and ever or yet yeah, ascended up forever and ever. That's the smoke, not their people. That they died. And they had no rest day or night who worshipped the beast in his image, and whosoever received the, the mark of his name. Amen. What is what constitutes a seal? There's the seal of King George VI of England. It has his name, King George. His title was King. His territory was Great Britain and the Dominions. Except you, that doesn't count you rebels in America, of course. But, but what we've got here is a seal. Now, when we look at the Ten Commandments, we see the First Commandment, Second Commandment, Third Commandment. It doesn't say who this God is. The Six Commandments on the Second Stone doesn't say who God is. The only commandment that tell, has the seal of God and it is name, Jehovah, his title, God, his sphere of influence, heaven and earth. And so he was the creator. His name was Jehovah. And so the seal of God is in the fourth commandment. And the mark of the beast is in Sunday worship. We cannot touch God's commandments. God says his Sabbaths are assigned between him and his people. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbath to be assigned between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. Ezekiel 20, 12, and 20, 20 reiterates the same thing. And hallow my Sabbath, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. That, that, that it also can mean uh, that it can be uh, uh, the seal, the sign can be as a seal. The angels are holding back the winds of strife until God's people are sealed with the Sabbath of God. And that's us today. Satan is playing a deadly game to keep lost humanity deceived until it is too late. Satan was kicked out of heaven for transgressing God's law and will be destroyed when, his when this controversy between good and evil comes to an end. His sole desire is to deceive lost humanity into transgressing God's law so he can then claim them as his own and take them to eternal ruin with him and his angels. God's new covenant. These churches that say the commandments are done away with. In Jeremiah 31, 29 to 33, it says the new covenant will be, I'll write the law on their hearts. And then it says in Hebrews 10 or 8, 10 and 10, 16, the same thing. This is the covenant that I'll make with them after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my law into their hearts and in their minds while I write them. That's the very foundation of the gospel. In times past, God winked at our ignorance. All our old relatives, our old dear grandmothers and grandfathers that loved God and kept Sunday, God winks at that. And that's why the prophet said that it'll take us a week to get to heaven because no one will enter heaven unless they keep a Sabbath, before they keep a Sabbath. So God winked at that. Those who say they love God and keep not his commandments are liars, John 1 John 2 4 if you break one of the commandments you break them all James 2 10 God's remnant church would keep his commandments and be attacked by a church state union and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed to keep the commandments of God and have the testimonies of Jesus Revelation 12 17 Revelation here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14, 12. Amen. God's Sabbath day will be kept in heaven for eternity. Isaiah 66, 23. And it shall come to pass and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh but come before for me, says the Lord. Man cannot imagine the joys in heaven for the faithful, but it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the joys that await that God has promised them that love him. First Corinthians two nine. Amen. That friend is this morning's presentation. I hope we're encouraged 
to look to Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. Before the flood, people carried in their sins and they left it too late. They laughed at Noah. Do you know when they stopped laughing? When it started to rain. As in the days of Noah, so would it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. So we're going to get back to you very shortly. Let me finish with a, a wee prayer. Father in heaven, we do thank you for the, the patience and great kindness towards lots, lost humanity. We know, Lord, you wish your great desire was that not one little soul would be lost. Help us to look to thee as the author and finisher of our faith. Help us to claim the promises of God. Put a missionary spirit upon us that we might draw others to heaven and to that wonderful supper where you will drink again fresh the wine of life which you have not touched since the upper room 2,000 years ago. So bless us now and keep us in the name of Jesus Christ, our high priest and soon coming king. Amen.